Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because we get to take a look at the all new Aya Neo Retro Power version for 2021. Now when it comes to the original Aya Neo, I'm a huge fan of it. It did make big waves when it was released. It's powered by a Ryzen 4500U, which does put out some decent performance. But this new version here is actually powered by the Ryzen 7 4800U. So instead of six cores and six threads, we get eight cores and 16 threads with this unit. And since this is the retro power version, we do have a new color scheme here. And as you can see, this is very reminiscent of the old NES controllers. We kind of have that beige coloring. We've got the red action buttons, but we still get all the extras like the analog sticks, the shoulder buttons, the triggers, and all of the menu buttons. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. And when it comes down to it, this is definitely the most powerful Aya Neo that's been released as of making this video. We have 8 cores and 16 threads up to 4.2 gigahertz, and I think this is going to put out some really good performance. So yeah, overall, I love the design of the Aya Neo, and with this new color scheme, I think it looks better than ever. We still have the 7 inch 1280 by 800 touch panel on the front here, and it looks absolutely amazing. When it comes to the button layout, we're still working with the same design of the original Aya Neo. Over here on the right hand side, we have our A, B, X, Y. We've also got our analog stick and we have these integrated hotkey buttons. We have escape, we have a task manager, a Windows home button and a keyboard button. Moving over to the right hand side, we have another analog stick, our D-pad. We have our Xbox button and our start select. When you press that Xbox button, it's going to bring up the game bar if you're running Windows 10 or Windows 11. Just makes it really easy to get some information on screen with the press of a button. And of course, up top here, we have our shoulder buttons, our trigger buttons, we have a power button and volume control. And when it comes to I.O., up top, we have two USB Type-C ports and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving around to the bottom, we get another USB Type-C jack and we have our dual stereo speakers down here. So when it comes to the new Aya Neo Retro Power Plus, or what they're going to be calling the Aya Neo Pro without this retro styling color, for the CPU we have the Ryzen 7 4800U. 8 cores, 16 threads, we have a base clock of 1.8 GHz with a boost up to 4.2. Built-in Radeon 8 graphics at 1800 MHz, but we can easily overclock this and I've been able to go to 2000 on this unit here. 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM running at 4,266 MHz. You can opt for a 512 gigabyte M.2 or a 1 terabyte M.2 SSD. The screen is a 7 inch 1280 by 800 IPS. It does have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 built in. A 47 watt hour battery with 65 watt quick charging capabilities. And this is running Windows 10, but you could upgrade to Windows 11 or wipe it completely and install Linux. It's really up to you. Okay, so before we get into some benchmarking, some PC game testing and emulation, I wanted to show you a new feature that Aya has actually created. This is known as the Aya Space. This does come pre-installed on the newer Aya Neos, and basically what this is, is a game launcher. If we hold the keyboard button, it's going to bring Aya Space up, or if we just tap it, it's going to bring up our quick settings. And from here, we can actually change how the fan performs, we can change the brightness, the volume, and we can set the TDP on this CPU from 5 watts up to 20, but there are other applications out there that allow us to go a bit higher to get some more performance out of it, but I think this is a cool feature that they've added to their handhelds. So since this is a gaming handheld, I want to show you how it performs with at least one game up front, and then we're going to move over to some benchmarks, we'll test out some more games, and then test out some emulation. But the first one I have here is Forza Horizon 5. Alright, so here it is, and I am extremely impressed at how this performs. Now I did overclock that GPU to 2000 MHz, and I'm running the CPU at 30 watts right now. We have a low medium mix, and to tell you the truth, most of this is at low, but I do have the new resolution scaling settings set to quality, which definitely makes a difference. We're only at 1280 by 800 because that's the resolution of the screen, but with it set up like this, I'm getting an average of 73 FPS with Forza Horizon 5. Now if you don't mind running this game at 30 FPS, you can actually go up to high, and by the end of this video I'll show you that running. But personally, the way I like playing this game is locked at 60, so from the settings, I'm at 60 FPS. I've turned a couple more of the options up to medium, and with it set up like this, it's actually going to draw a little less wattage, even though I'm set at 30 watts, and it's going to keep that APU a lot cooler. So yeah, I'm really impressed with the performance so far. We will get right back into some game testing, but first up, I just wanted to give you a look here. I mean, it's pretty awesome seeing a little handheld like this with 8 cores and 16 threads. We've also got that 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X at 4266, 
and the built-in Radeon graphics. Like I mentioned, this can be overclocked, and I have overclocked the GPU. So if we run a stress test real quick here, we'll go to sensors. You'll see we're at 2000 megahertz instead of 1800. To tell you the truth, I haven't tried to go any higher than this. There's a chance we could go up to 21, but I think this is a real nice sweet spot here. It's not a huge overclock, but it will definitely help out. Now, when it comes to the IA space, give you a closer look here. We've got that fan we can change. We can go to savings, this is a lower RPM on the fan, or we could go to wild, which does take it up. Now for custom, we have five watts. We also have 11 watts, 15, and 20 watts. When playing indie games, I would go with around 11 watts. Maybe even some stuff will get by with 5 watts. This is really going to save the battery. Once you start getting in the 20 and 30 watt range, it really does open up this 4800U. And right now, I wanted to show you what I'm set at. So I personally use something called AMD APU Tuning Utility. I've done a video on this showing you how to get it set up. We can overclock the GPU from here. And we can also set up pre-made presets from the Ryzen 2000 up to the 5000. I've got this set pretty high, but I wanted to see if we could even do it. So I've got my CPU wattage on screen right here. I'm going to run Prime95. This is going to be the maximum power and heat stress test. I'll hit this. So we're sitting around 45 watts with this. And this is actually pretty awesome. I'm not sure what magic they're working in the BIOS here, but when it comes to the 4800U, this is some of the highest wattage I've been able to see pull out of this little APU. And when it's set up like this, we can get a really good clock on the CPU, and that GPU is also going to stay at its maximum clock, which just happens to be 2000 megahertz with the way I have it set up right now. You're not going to get much battery life at all at 45 watts. I would recommend 20 to 25, but I just wanted to see what we could go to, and 45 looks to be about the maximum, and you can see that CPU is hitting 95 right now, so you really don't want to run it there, but I wanted to see if we could even take it up. All right, so the first thing I always do with these APUs is run some benchmarks. We're at 30 watts here with all the benchmarks you're going to see. Geekbench 5, 1173 single, 7,285 multi. Looking really good here. Next up, we have 3D Mark Night Raid. Total score, 15,569. And just for reference, on the original Ioneo with the 4500U, we got 11,444. Next, we have Firestrike with a 3,806, and finally, Time Spy with a 1,512. So if you were to take these scores and compare it to your gaming PC with a dedicated GPU, these are looking really low. But for a handheld running an iGPU, I think these scores look pretty decent. Testing out a couple more PC games, here we have the original Skyrim, high settings, it's going to run at 60. And we're only pulling 20 watts from that APU. It's looking really good. I did try ultra settings, but I had a few dips down to 57. If you can handle that, then you can run this at ultra, but I dropped it down to high to keep that steady 60. Next up, we have Doom Eternal, and this is just one of those games that's really hard on these iGPUs. We're at 1280 by 800 because that's the Ioneo screen resolution, low settings, and I do have dynamic resolution scale going. It's trying its hardest to keep it at that 60 mark, but we do get some dips. Moving back over to the built-in screen, here's GTA 5 with a high normal mix. I got an average of 68 FPS out of this one, and if you just dropped it down to normal, you could get an average of around 78, but I left it here because it is definitely playable. Checking out Injustice 2 with a medium-low mix. I should have probably dropped everything down the low because we do have a few dips down to 58. But then again, if that FPS counter wasn't on screen, I'd probably never notice it. I also wanted to check out some Halo Infinite. Here we are, low settings with an unlocked frame rate. Now unfortunately we're not going to hit 60 with this one, at least not yet. Maybe some optimizations down the road with the game itself will allow us to do that. But for right now, your best bet would be set this to low, lock it at 30, and play away. It would be nice to be running this at 60, but unfortunately it's just not going to allow us to do that right now.
and I had to come back to Forza Horizon 5. I wanted to show you this at high settings, locked at 30. It's pretty amazing that we're able to do this. Now we're not gonna do 60 at high settings, but if we go in here, you can see we are at high, and I'm actually gonna take this resolution scaling from high to ultra. Now remember, at the beginning of the video, low, medium, mix, we can do 60, we can do over 60 with it, but if you wanna go up to high with that resolution scale set to ultra, locking it at 30 will work. Now it's time to check out a little bit of emulation performance, and so far so good. I will have a full emulation video coming up soon, so keep an eye on the channel. But I just wanted to give you a quick idea of how this is going to perform. So first up, we have PS2 using PC SX2, DirectX 11 back in. And as you can see, it's running at 60, and we're only pulling about 15 watts from that APU. Next up, we have Wii U using SimU, Vulcan back in, Breath of the Wild. We're set to 30 here, and I haven't noticed it dip down below 30 at all. This is really great performance. Now there is a chance we could do 60 with this if we drop the resolution of the game down just a bit, but we're at 720p right now. In my full emulation test, we will check that out just to see if it's possible. I know some Wii U games will be able to be played at 60, but this one might be pushing it a bit. And the final emulator I wanted to test, at least for this video, was RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. Vulcan back in, Skate 3 running really, really well, but every once in a while I do notice a few dips here and there. There are a few settings that I could tweak in my next video, we'll take a look at that, but overall, I gotta say, performance with PS3 right now is looking great on this handheld. So the way it's looking right now, the new Aya Neo powered by the 4800U is doing a great job. I'm really glad that they were able to get that TDP up enough so we could run a decent clock on the CPU and our maximum clock on the GPU. And as you saw in this video, it is quite possible to overclock the GPU by a little bit. And uh, in my next video, I will try to take it up a bit higher. We'll go with docked mode at 45 watts, but this thing will get hot at 45 watts. I mean, I definitely expect it to, but I still want to see what kind of performance we can pull out of this thing. Overall, I'm very impressed with this new version, but I still have a lot of testing to do. I will have a couple more videos coming up, like a full emulation video, so if there's anything you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. And of course, I want to get some battery testing and some thermal testing out of the way this weekend, so I'll be messing around with this quite a bit. If there's anything you want to see running at all on this, be it emulation or PC gaming, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.